So Flag Hunt, not to be confused with Flag Run, is yet another map that I distinctly remember having played quite a few times actually on uh, people's servers with other people, of course, because, you know, pfft, online. Um, in fact, when I wasn't too familiar with the game and I was just starting out, I actually got this confused with the map Casbah, uh, which might be pretty easy because not only do they look the same, but this map, well, you'll see. You'll see why I might, you know, it's pretty easy to get confused. I'm not overtly fond of this one. I actually think it's kind of subpar. But, you know, it seems to be relatively popular. So, you know, let's let's give it a good look here. Here's the README. Uh, this map is dated um, August 25th, 2001, if you're curious. All right, so Flag Hunt, Rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah! Rock the Cat. Anyway, um... So, yeah, game, Half-Life, mod, Team Fortress Classic. It was done by author, what the fuck? Chemical Burn, Dave Vanderberg. Ah, uh, yeah. Who's also done, did uh, these ones, which I don't think I've ever played, actually. Might have to check them out at some point. Here's the email address, which probably isn't there anymore. I'm assuming the home pages were there. There's a number. ICQ, if you, you know, if that's interesting. So, it's like additional credits to what the fuck, Shima, for putting up with my constant questions. Also, thanks, what the fuck, unethical, for creating the what the fuck, flag models. A uh, what the fuck, Snowdog, for creating the what the fuck. Fuck backpack models. What the fuck, evil dick, for creating the RTC wave file. Rock the cast butter. <laughs> what the fuck, Moog, for creating the RTC uh, rock the Casbar wave file. Bioweapon for creating the textures in the secret rooms. Daniel Saguto for creating the birds wave uh, file. And Fry Guy for texture editing. All right. So you have full red flag on rock the Casbar. Caspa seek and capture by what the fuck chemical burn burn at this website that probably doesn't exist objective find scattered enemy or neutral flags and return them to your capture point located inside your base all right scoring five team points and two personal frags for securing a flag other notes flag carriers walk at 75 percent speed drop flags are removed permanently from the map after 15 seconds Flag stop appearing after 40 minutes and map change is forced after 45 minutes, which I, I think is stupid. Not only is that way too long for the kind of map this is, but you know, why not just let, it's the same problem I had with Dust Bowl and like it, how, it, how it automatically ends the map and like what goes into the next map after a certain point of time. Why not let the server runner adjust that? It's so stupid. I don't like it. All right, there's install. You know how to do that. Construction, base, scratch, editors use, Worldcraft 3.3. Build time, approximately 20 days. So a lot quicker than, you know, the, uh, the other two custom maps I played. And compile time, also way quicker. About 20 minutes. No bugs. Sometimes the flag point... Some flag points... Uh, some flags point in correct ways. Not a big deal. Minor texture and misalignments on corners of buildings. All right. Minor, some, some minor sky clipping problems. Uh, send them or these things that probably don't exist anymore. Authors may not use this level as a base to build additional levels. You must not distribute this level unless you include this file with no modifications. If you don't cooperate, then don't distribute it in any form. This BSB may be distributed only over the internet or, and or BPS systems. You are not authorized to put this BSB on any CD or distribute it in any way without my permission. Fairly standard. All right. So, I need to quickly clarify something that this map is like Caspar. How fucking coincidental. It doesn't work properly with the latest version of Foxbot. I'm not going to show it, but basically on the latest version of Foxbot, the map, the bots are confused thinking it's an attack defend map. So, the red or blue team, I can't quite remember, will set up a lot, like, active really defensively. And then the other team will just, like, you know, not, like, not even that actually. Let me change that. So on the latest version of Foxbot, um, they just don't play correctly. Team Blue or Red, I can't remember which one, just really does not leave its uh, base of operations. It kind of stays near its uh, spawn point and doesn't really ever try to capture any flags. Whereas the other team will start actually like going out to a certain degree, build up defenses and stuff like that, but really not to be too focused on capturing anything. So sort of playable, but not really. So we're using the same version of Foxbot we used in Caspot. What a strange goddamn coincidence. I recommend 32 players. So yeah, as I pointed out, it, it definitely takes after Flag Run. So it this is a also an asymmetrical map. 
This is kind of where the split is, all right, as you can see here. We'll go over to the blue team first. And as the map kind of, like, you know, kind of, the readme kind of alluded to. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forget we're using that older version. Anyway, um, so as that uh, readme kind of alluded to, ma the flags will randomly spawn across the map in certain points. I say random, but there's always going to be the same points that they spawn. Nice uh, glitch there, as you said. Um, but theoretically, if you know where all the different points are, and like you know, you could kind of ahead of time kind of plan your route. Uh, some of the flags spawn in points where you either need like rocket jumps or cock jumping to get to. And yeah, basically, you just have to explore the map, which I'll show off. I really won't give any strategic, um, like, kind of points or anything like that, because I've only... The way this map works, it's just a lot more scatterbrained than some of the other maps. And I'm just really not that fond of the map. It's not a bad map. I just think the idea is that how it's executed isn't really that good. But I'll at least go over. There's some nice looking, like, little, like, well, relatively nice looking fire areas here. So yeah, this is uh, the blue side we're taking a look at first here. The map thankfully does point around where everything is, so you can't really get too lost. It's small enough. Yeah, see, here you go. Here's a blue flag. So you, the, only the red team can grab this one. A neutral flag, both teams can grab. But basically, you have to be the red team, get your ass over here, and grab these uh, blue flags, and then take them back over. Nice little point you can jump over. That's what I took advantage of last time I played this map. And yeah, that's about it for the blue side here. Yeah, see, there you go. I secured a flag. There's this little area over here. There's also these little town squares. I don't know if I'd really call this really a town square, but you know what they're trying to attempt here. So we're back under the red side, which leads over into the blue side here. Flags could spawn up here, I swear to God. They, they get really interesting. They could spawn down here, too. I guess if you wanted to, um, ahead of time... Yeah, see, there's a red flag. If you wanted ahead of time to see where all the different flags are, just let the map kind of spawn in. And then in an empty server, if you have the time to kill, and you'll get all the different flag spawns. I don't really recommend doing it. Here's the red side. You can see there's a red flag. You can also, like, there's, like, you know, this is a little interesting because you can go from both ends. Got this. The, the market, which is, this is the area I most distinctly remember when I started playing it for the first time again after all these years. Because this area was drilled in my head. I would always end up this way whenever I play on an actual server. Again, here you go. You see, there's a red flag. You gotta jump up to grab it. You got this building here. I assume uh, buildings... I mean, flags spawn in these buildings, too. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Here's the red base itself. Red spawn point. I'll go back over and show you what the blue ball like, spawn point looks more like, because I feel like I kind of glossed over it. Uh, yeah, and there's this little area here where I've seen a flag spawn. I've grabbed it recently, too, playing with the bots. Uh, not much to say. I just... I don't... My big problem is, is that with the, how the random nature and the, like, you know, and all that of how the maps spawn in and stuff like that, I just don't think it's very fun to play in the long term. I feel it's kind of the way it is with the, like, you know, putting the Half-Life maps in, like, you know, Team Fortress Classic where, you know, you can have some strategy, you can have some fun, but it just feels more scattered and, like, you know, less focused than, like, it should be. And, except, this has even less of an excuse because this map was specifically designed for Team Fortress Classic, you know what I mean? It's just goofy. I might take a look to see if there's any of those hidden maps. Hidden rooms. Oh! I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be where the, um... The, like, the little spawn, like, you know, the... When the map loads up, that's where the uh, spawn area is I mean, the spectate camera is supposed to be, but it just doesn't really work. So, I guess it's a secret room. I don't think it's supposed to be, but yeah. Anyway, here's the um, spawn point, if you will, of the blue side. I do like how these look, like the little, like, you know, fountains and stuff. That's a nice touch. And it, it's a nice enough looking map. But I feel it couldn't really escape the Casbah um, influence too much. Or it tried to, and it kind of just ended up being lukewarm, in my opinion. But what the hell do I know? A lot of people were obviously playing this damn map, you know, because, you know, I see this... Uh, of all the custom maps I've ever, like, you know, downloaded for this little map series, this is the one I remember the most. Or, especially the most constant, too. I don't really know if, were, if there's even any other really secret maps, like, rooms. I don't know if they consider the, like, inside with, like, you know, the little fire pit and stuff the secret rooms. I mean, there's this black box 
I, I'm, I'm frightened. I don't want anything to do with that. Let's just start playing. So even if um, it doesn't actually end after 15 minutes, I set it for a 16-minute time limit. Um, I'm going to go for about 15, and then I'm just going to stop because, you know, I just, I, I'm just i not particularly a fan of this map. I just don't think there's a lot to say either. Sorry, I, I feel like I'm being negative, but it just doesn't... Something about this map just does not work with me. I don't know why. Yeah, get it? Because Rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah, Shreem, he don't like it. Rock the Casbah, Casbah. Beating a joke in, like, why... I, I get why you call, like, you know... You based it sort of off the map Casbah, but it wasn't really that funny. Like, I've seen people actually joke about Rock the Casbah, that song, with the actual Casbah map. But, like, you know, it's... It's just, I don't know, they, they kept going with it. Like, it's like the funniest thing ever. We gotta name it Rock the Casbah Edition. Flag Hunt, you know. You won't even have Rock the Casbah play when you capture the map. Which, I, I'm gonna have to mute the goddamn, like, you know, video when that happens. Or the game audio. See, you can't grab your own flag, you don't get a blue one. It's just, why? What was so funny about that? Like, I feel like I'm being overly negative, but, you know, eh. Yeah, so, if I kill this guy, which is probably gonna be unlikely... Yeah, see, he died. That flag does not stay active for very long at all. They'll um, disappear permanently, as that read me said. So I guess that, like, you know, it stops people from, like... NOT FUNNY! And to me, yeah, it just gets boring. Like, you know, I have to try to get to... Because not only do you have to get into the other enemy's base, but then you had to track down where, like when the flags are actually active. And especially first time playing it, you're not going to know exactly what flags are spawned in at what moment and stuff like that. It just gets annoying in my opinion. It's just, it's slow. It's a far slower map than it needs to be. I mean, obviously a lot of effort was put into the map, so I don't want to shit on like the actual presentation or anything like that. Because it actually looks very nice. It looks like an official map. But like, come on. Uh, but again, I, I I guess I'm wrong because everyone else seems to like this just fine, so. And the thing is, too, once they, like you have enough of a foothold in a certain area defense-wise, it is very, very hard to be able to actually break through that as an attacker because, you know, it takes too long to get over there. Like, you know, again, think about it this way, too. You could argue to use teleporters and stuff like that. But remember, when this map came out, teleporters were not a thing. This is 2001. So, like, you know, just the fact that I have to walk over... Back to the fortress, from my spawn point, it's like the other enemy's team, every single time I die, they have a chance at grabbing a flag, and if I'm not careful, once the like, you know, I die, the flag gets dropped, 15 seconds later, it's gone. I don't know if they'll spawn back in, and like, you know, another, like, a spawn point, like, if every flag could spawn back in more than once at a certain spawn point, I don't know. But it just, everything about this, to me, it just doesn't work in theory, like, in, on paper, this is a really fun idea and cute, like, unique one for a map. But then you just see, like, you know, I'm having more fun watching these, like, goddamn heavies jump and dance there, you know? That should not be happening. I mean, you know, it kind of goes back to something I said in, uh, like, the, if you watch the SS Nyx map video. Where it's like, you know, Team Fortress Classic's about winning. It's not about winning, it's about having fun. And that's actually a segment I unironically do stand by. It says entirely a game you should not be too concerned about winning. And just like, you know, you should try. But, you know, you should also just be trying to, like, you know, have a good time. You know, frag each other. You know, do, you know work with your team. It's, it's, it's just a good time. It's a good time that you should be having. But at the same time, too, if it's just, like, is just kind of killing everyone without any, like, real focus. I mean, even, like, you might be arguing, like, well, what about the deathmatch maps? Like, you know, Void. You seem to like those a lot better than this. Well, because those are smaller, you know, and that had a set goal. I was just supposed to be killing each other. And the maps themselves, on virtue, they were originally designed for Half-Life Deathmatch, function as good killing maps, where I'm just supposed to kill everyone. They're small enough, even if I recommend playing with smaller people, they're still small enough that, you know, they work for their intended goal. This is like, you know, an actual team map where I have an objective just does not work. It falls apart, in my opinion. So a lot of times I end up just trying to kill the other team. But then the problem with that is that the map is just too big and too easy to defend that you can't even really have a good time just killing everyone. So that's why this map kind of falls apart in my opinion. I'm sorry. Whoever made it, I'm sorry. I'm really not trying to be negative. Like on the off chance that you watch this, like, you know, 21 years after like you put it out, 
But still, I'm not trying to shit on your work because, you know, you obviously put a lot of effort in. But to me, I just feel like, that, you know, it was kind of for naught. You should I would have just, even if, even if you're talking the Caspa influence, you should have just made it more of an actual, like, capture the flag map. Considering that map was also symmetrical, and yet, I, asymmetrical, sorry, and I had a far better time playing it, it could have worked. Eh, uh, I don't know, I don't know, man. And no, I'm not just playing Pyro because, you know, to add to the negativity, none of the bots are playing Pyro, so, you know, someone's gotta be Pyro, I'm sorry. Like, look at how thin these entrances are. That's what I mean when it gets too easy to defend, because it's so hard to actually get enough people through this doorway without getting blown up. Like, if they were wider, and, like, you know, the map was designed to accommodate that, you can have just a continual push by the, like, one team will eventually get through just on the sheer number of people that are there, you know? Uh, look at this! I keep bouncing off this! Come on! I actually was able to grab a flag for once. I'm not gonna get it anywhere. Heal me! Heal me, asshole! My god! Ignore me! Ignore me! Fuck! Well, hopefully one of the other team members grabs it. Yeah, there you go. You must have picked up the slack. Thank you, Alfonso. I don't know why sometimes you get spawned up here. That's a little cute. I mean, it has personality. Even if, it, if I feel it's a little forced with, like, the Rock the Casbah jokes. But, you know, at least the person designing it was having fun. That's, some, like, the feeling I get. But, you know, ah, uh, it just it's, it's not working. It's not clicking! It's not clicking. Yeah, that's about all I could stomach. Um, like, you know, I don't particularly like this, but considering the sheer popularity of it, from what I remember, I mean, if you really want to play this, good for you. I'm just, I'm just stupid, and I'm, maybe I'm just missing something. Uh, yeah.